Salamat po sa satong MC. Hello po, good day uh, everyone. Marahi na po po sa Gabos. Uh, lalong lalo na po sa Gabos na nagsusubaybay as in nagpaparticipar sa webinar po ini. Lalong lalo na po sa mga nag-live stream via Facebook Live, kan Facebook page, kan uh, komunikasyon lokal. Sa mga nakaantabay na po, uh, pwede man pong i-share ang sa itong video live, live streaming sa nganing mas mapahiwas pa po niya to ang sa tuyang advokasya na iyo ang pagpapaurog as in pagpapararong kan sa itong lokal na kultura as in kasaysayan likti sa partido. Sa amay na pagkakataon po, mawag ko na pong pasalamatan ang mga tawang nagtarabang as in nagkontribuer sa triumpo kaining webinar. Enot sa administrasyon kan Partido State University sa pamamayo kan ginagalangang si Dr. Raul Bradisina, uh, PSU President, Professor Patricia Candelaria, na iyo ang Vice President for Research, Extension and Knowledge Management, Ma'am Rosemarie Tabardillo, Extension and Community Service Director, Dr. Johnny Neil Kapukaw, Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, Mr. Limer Serrano, the Program Director of Bachelor of Arts in Communication. Sa gabos po na colleagues sa College of Arts and Sciences, lalong lalo na po kila Ma'am Sheena Serrano, Ma'am Ruth Daphne Prila, and kay Ma'am Andrea Del Miguez sa sainda pong uh, uh, pagtabang sa preparasyon po kan programang ini. Sa impormasyon po kan kagabsan, pinapamayuhan po ni Mr. Roman Cano ang sa topong webinar ngunyan sa tabang kan sa iyang mga estudyante sa kursong Bachelor of Arts in Communication sa subject na Readings in Philippine History. Pinabati po niya ito ang gabos sa participants uh, via uh, Facebook live streaming, Google Meet as in Zoom meetings. Igwa po kitang participants from Partido State University, of course. Hello, dear students. Welcome sa satuyang uh, programa ngunyan na hapon. Igwa din po kitang teacher participants from the Department of Education sa Pasakao. Si Pocot, Ocampo, Pili, as in Del Gallego, and also from the Department of Education, Katanduanes. Mga sir, sano, salamatan po sa danay na pagsuporta. And also, we would like to acknowledge the participation of the college instructors from the Shepherdville College, Tigaon, as authorized by the President, Pastor Paul Constante, and Dr. Emilia Brusa. <laughs> Present with us here today is the Professor of History from the University of the Philippines, Diliman, Professor Javier Leonardo Rogeria, who will complement some insights concerning our topic on the local studies. So, sa inda po gabos, dagos po, as in lugod, dakol kitang manod dan, munyan aldaw na ini, manungod sa local studies. I guess we can now proceed uh, with the lecture proper. So we have the following uh, uh, objectives. First, we have to define local studies. Sa tuya pong tatawanin doon, tatawanin importansya, as in maninigong kahulugan kung ano po ang inapod niya itong local studies. The next bullet, please. Understand the development of local studies in the Philippines. The third objective is gain insights on the significance of the local studies in the Philippines. And the last uh, objective for uh, today's webinar or lecture is to cultivate the articulation and appreciation of Partido studies. So our discussion is limited by these four uh, objectives. So uh, uh, as further subdivided, okay, or uh, yung further subdivision po ng ating uh, lecture for this afternoon, so we have the first part, which is the issues concerning the local history and the development of local studies. And the second part is local studies as decolonizing and people empowering studies. And we also have local studies, building blocks of Philippine studies. And uh, this is the last part, I guess. So Partido Studies as local studies. So magkatigwa po kitang preview, manungun po sa Partido Studies. Because originally, 
uh, this pro this program or activity was conceptualized, as I've said earlier, ng mga students po under uh, readings in Philippine history as facilitated by Sir Roman Cano. So, uh, expand mila lang po itong uh, activity and uh, nagmawot po kami na we also try to disseminate it to the public. So, yan po. Nakakaugma lang po na ito pong mga na-invite me from other places, other uh, districts and uh, uh, municipalities. So, uh, nag-anduyog po sila na mag-participate po ngunyan na uh, event pong ini sa ngunyan na hapon. So, uh, let us start with understanding local history. So, let us um, make this the starting point of the discussion for uh, well, centering on local studies. So according to Sam, Samuel Tan, um, one of the prolific scholars of Philippine history, so sinasabi niya po sa sarong article, local history refers to that category of historical writing which emphasizes a specific or limited aspect of national life, geographic or otherwise. Nahiling tapo digin na may limitation ang local history. So other than uh, uh, the historian Samuel Tan, we also have the National Artist for Literature, namely si, uh, Professor or Dr. Resil Mojares, who said that uh, local history is the study of a geographical unit smaller than a nation, a region, province, city, town, or barrio. So, uh, medyo limited sa geographic scope ang study ka, local history. So for us, I guess, to understand the development of local studies, ma mas, I guess, mas madali niya to or mas ma-appreciate niya to ang development ng local studies when we also try to, uh, to explore or unravel the issues behind the, the local history, itong limitation kang history. Yes, Paul. So local history was a major wave of interest in Philippine historical studies in the 1970s. Although uh, Rizal Mojares and other articles really said that uh, the local history was uh, was already there uh, as, as far back as uh, Spanish colonialism, so iba na pong mga uh, local history. But... Uh, well, basing on the review of the rela related literature, they pa pong masyadong vibrant itong uh, mga local histories kasi mas nakatuon sila sa mga ibang things and topics at the national level. So later on, may hiling tapos siya. Ano ito pang mga issue? So Alfred McCoy and uh, Ed De Jesus, uh, itong sinurat po ni Dana, Social uh, History, Global Trade and local transformations so that uh, article or book is particularly instructive on the wealth of scholarships on local histories in the 1970s may mga kinorolekta po sila ni mga works trying to exhibit or trying to uh, signify that indeed iguaning strength iguaning wave sa development kang uh, local history um, more specifically in the 1970s so the works they have collected generally traversed and examined the, the broader scope of various regional and provincial histories in the Philippines. So kumbaga uh, halos pares din kang review and related literature, so nag-collect tapos sila ni mga works. Then they try to really uh, you know, show to the readers that indeed there's already the development of local history. So Makoy regarded... Uh, the work of John Larkin as pivotal for spurring a wave of regional and local research during the 1970s. So such, McCoy explicitly attributed the milestones of local history studies to Larkin's seminal work, which expands the vision of Philippine history as grounded on local histories. So they try to constitute the Philippine history uh, as a whole duman po sa mga various local histories. So yun po itong uh, tig-advance kay ng mga scholars or historians during this time. 
So local history in the Philippines was constrained by archival positivistic historiography. So may hiling tapo din This is already, uh, uh, well, as I've said earlier, starting point na siya, tanganing maintindihan niya to, si development kang local studies. So the writing of local history is largely based on the archival sources. Although, uh, si Leslie Boson in, uh, uh, in, in one article, so tig mention niya po na not just the archival sources, but we, we can also use or utilize other types of sources like the, the records, the municipal records. So those materials can also be used tangani pong advance or magsurat ni local history. So local history is enriched uh, essentially and primarily or fundamentally by positivistic historiography na may maxim sinda na talagang uh, they really maintain that no document, no history. So kumain ng dokumento, you cannot write history. So if you do not have a valid basis for your claims, lalong lalo na historical writings. So so-called document-based history. In its early phase of development, the common problem on the local history was the accessibility and availability of materials, which are the primary sources, mga archival sources. Ilingon po niya to itong mga statement ng mga nagkakapirang mga scholars. So as Totanis noted, this is where the writing of Bicol history has been weak. Sinasabi ni Totanis in uh, 2002, sa yung article. The materials are there, they exist, yung sinda, but they are scattered in various repositories in Manila or abroad in the 107 municipalities and seven cities all over the region. So uh, it was referring to the Bicol region. So scattered, kota-kota, uh, if not, mapa abroad pa, so that, that's quite challenging, okay? or mapa Manila, for instance. So similarly, Perez and Templanza, Templanza reported the inaccessibility of research materials for the writing of local history. Uh, became a problem of many historians and researchers. This then was a challenge to historiography. So malinot na nahihiling tapo na inaccessibility and an availability of the material si uh, prevailing problem or issues sa development kang local history. And we can understand the belated advancement of local history in this type of uh, loophole or deficiency kasi kulang itong mga materials. Other than, well, the skills and uh, the scholarships, the level of scholarships or the, the, the rigor of, uh, if not rigor, but at least itong scholarly background or sufficiency kang sarong scholar for doing local history. So given its uh, own limitation, the practice, yes, the methodology, subject matter and approach of local history was expanded. So daro, uh, I hope na padikit-dikit natatawa na po kita ng glimpse. Uh, given that there's the limitation with the local history, so naigiling ka na po na may development given the urgency to really expand local history. So currently, uh, people expand their interest as reported by Perez and Templanza to study further something that they can easily understand and relate with. So ito po dang masyadong makaka-relate ang mga tao kasi uh, apart from the important breakthroughs or the major events na usually tinutukdo sa sa classes. So ang local history po da and or local studies mas harani po da sa puso kan mga local constituents. So leading the field of local history to a new approach of attempting to study the growth and development of the locality, including its institutions and all its manifold aspects. So this is done through field work, cooperative study, examination of original records, and rewriting of social and economic history. So in this manner, the study of local sources adds to the knowledge of the mentioned subject. The expanded interest, okay, as uh, underscored as highlighted in this uh, statement, uh, in local history is then transformed into a wider and deeper sense, introducing 
the birth of local studies. So we can see now the transition. So from local history, naihiling niyan na nyato itong idea about local studies, which has become, well, more inclusive in terms of not just the subject matter or the theme that is being studied, but more importantly, in terms of research methodology, uh, research styles, etc., etc., and other sources that can be utilized. Tangani pong ma madagdagan or maggrow or magdevelop ang local studies or local history. So, uh, kung susubukan taman po ang sinasabi ni Sir Rosel uh, Rosel Mohares. So, igwa po siya ning also definition of local studies, which is the parallel scholarly interest in local history, local folk traditions, and regional slash vernacular literature. And sa ibang article, may sinurat siya na local studies uh, is a term which is referring to intertwined interest in the local, the popular, and the indigenous. So we can uh, uh, find those definitions in sa mga articles as indicated by the year. Ayan po dyan sa, uh, well, sa index citation. So realizing the limitations of colonial archival materials, some scholars subsequently recognized the need to consider alternative sources, approaches, and methodologies for advancing historical writings at the local level. So nahihiling niya to na mas nag-expand na siya, nag, uh, nagiging inclusive na siya so in terms of sources, approaches, and methodologies. So uh, sa report po, sa sarong report ni Mohare sa sarong article, the development of the local history in the Philippines is telling. So may sinabi siya doon na or to indicate si Resil Mohares na uh, today more and more historians are making intensive use of oral traditions like folklore and interviews with a wide range of respondents. So nagkikwaning, uh, well, sa present term po bang niya sa mga researchers or scholarships may inabot ng key informant interview or you could say focus group discussion. So earlier earlier at this point in time, uh, way back 1989 sa panahon pong inini ni and perhaps before pa, kang 1989 or 1990, nahihiling ta po na tayo na siya solely nakabase sa mga archival sources. So they na lang limited ang local history sa mga archival sources or mga documents. So they also employed some other methodology sa, sa pagsurat ng lokal na kasaysayan. So McCoy was reported to have conducted a total of, yes, 472 uh, interviews in his history of Iloilo, Ilo, as reported by Mojares. Contemporary historians are also making more systematic use of findings and methods of the other social sciences, like geography, economics, and demography. demography. So nagiging multidisciplinary, you could say, or interdisciplinary na itong approach. So they na lang siya limited sa document based but some historians are becoming creative or resource, uh, resourceful if you can say so na uh, they also try to employ other uh, methodologies from the other disciplines. So in addition an excerpt of O'Brien's appraisal of Prealubit's Vicos of the Philippines is also captivating. So sinabi niya duman sa book review niya or uh, essay, review essay ni O'Brien sa, sa sinurat ni Ria Lubit na sinasabi niya, the great advantage of Ria Lubit's method of combining history, literature, and culture in the same work is that it balances off the over-dependence on foreign colonial historical sources that mar such other regional histories as Larkins sa Pampangans, which in their incompleteness give a narrow picture of other important Philippine regions and peoples. So, uh, well, as posited here by O'Brien, so medyo na limiteran po na ang approach kang uh, pag-aadal ng kasaysayan sa sarong locality by just basing solely or absolutely duman lang sa document, o kumbaga document-based lang solely. So uh, with this kind of creativity or uh, as, I, as I was saying a while ago, resourcefulness, more specifically with Ria Lubit, so nag-employ din siya ng other uh, methodology okay, from 
literature and culture. So other innovative methodologies in advancement of local studies are still worth noting. So Maria Nella Florendo suggests using ethnography and ethnohistory in writing Cordillera histories. So uh, sa sarong article na sinurat ni, uh, ni Dr. Maria Nella Florendo, the report na duman na uh, one can also employ uh, the well the ethnography and ethnohistory for writing local history, such as the, the case of Cordillera histories. So we also have here uh, Jimmy Soria, which employed repotography as a form of documentary and image-based research uh, in his Vintage Vegan in a Journey Through Digital Shops. So naka publish po ni sa Journal of History ng PNHS. Uh, in the same article, nahiling ko din po duman itong uh, sinurat ni historical writing ni Salvador Amores na naggamit siya ng object biography in anthropological research. So, ako siyang solely uh, history or uh, well, the methodology from the discipline history, but uh, Salvador Amores also employed other uh, methodology from other discipline. For tracing Isinay, local history, in her tracing local history through object biography. The case of the Isenai, always Pinutua, Ikat Blanco. So see si Dr. Acabado and uh, the group facilitated the so-called community archaeology with the Ifugaos and negotiation between the archaeologists and descendant communities, which enabled the participants to tell their story. So you po yung medyo uh, interesting this uh, sa study na ni, given that uh, they really try to underscore or empower people sa pagsurat kan lokal na kasaysayan. With the use of various disciplines from other, uh, uh, various methodology from other disciplines. So in view of the ex uh, expansion of local history, so local studies is catalyzed by the inclusion of various innovative approaches and methodologies. The words of Maria Lilia Rialubit is hereby worth mentioning. So sinasabi ni, uh, ni Ma'am Maria Lilia Rialubit that there's nothing wrong with poking about in social science to try to find some formula, some hypothesis, some model, some method which has immediate relevance to one's work. So sort of the justified and justified in the uh, Mam Ria Lubit for using or for utilizing other methodologies or approaches as introduced by other disciplines. So we now are on the second part, which is local studies as decolonizing and people empowering studies. So dikit uh, dikit po padikit dikit na nyato na may explore or ma unravel kung ano ang significance or kung ano ang purpose ano ang importansya kan pag advance o pagsusurat at the local level. So local history in the Philippines was largely Eurocentric and elite oriented. So this is the uh, well the ground uh, uh, issue. Okay, uh, this is what we can. We can consider springboard the month as a further development than local studies or local history. So Philippine history, as reported by uh, other scholars, well, me Churchill and Belinda Kino. So talagang tig expose ni si kaluyahan kang Philippine historiography. So as Belinda Kino clearly puts it, Philippine historiography lends heavily to the Spanish and American periods. Medyo nakatutok, medyo nakapokus duman sa mga uh, happenings or occurrence of, uh, well, important breakthroughs during the Spanish and American periods. So, uh, as as a result, nagkaigwaning inapod na Manila-centric Philippine history, and this was heavily criticized by uh, the historians in the 1970s notably by Larkin and Mojares. So sinasabi na Manila-centric Philippine history puda was enormously propelled and facilitated by the classical colonial scholarship 
as termed by Mujeres, which placed the focus on the motives, actions, and institutions of Western imperialism. So, Nakapokus, as I said earlier, tumat sa mga major breakthroughs or important breakthroughs kang uh, Spanish and American period, which is essentially elite-oriented history that consequently favor large events and institutions of Western imperialism. Sinasabi na nga ni Pukan Subago, important breakthroughs and the big names of history. So sa pagsurat din or pag-document din kang historical data papers, I was able to read one uh, more specific, uh, specifically uh, itong na-document po sa sangay. So as I read the manuscript or the content, masyadong, uh, well, elite-oriented din partially kasi ang tig-depek po naman is kung si Sayasi mga naging kapitan, si Sayasi mga naging leaderes. So seldom that we see, you know, purely grassroots uh, based discourses or descriptions. So I guess, uh, I speculate here na uh, that is still the predisposition of this, what we call classical colonial scholarship na sinasabi nga ni uh, sa literature na elite-oriented history. Masyadong naka-focus sa elite and those who, uh, who govern or lead the society. So uh, sinasabi din ni Resil Mujeres sa sayang article na much work in local history in the Philippines typically takes the form of political civic chronicles, the lives of prominent personalities and local accounts of big events like the Philippine Revolution. So uh, uh, part pa po ini kahit itong sinasabi niya itong classical colonial scholarship. As a result, next. Igo po ning uh, almost, uh, well, not almost, but may mga report po talaga na tig-signify sa article na garotig provincialized po itong Manila-centric Philippine history. So as indicated here by uh, Dr. Maria Nela Florendo sa sa iyang article, pero tig provincialize or tig localize lang po pan mga early historians of local history itong uh, well itong mga nangyari sa Manila. So they also try to at least imitate or uh, kumpara naging parameter uh, itong sa mga nangyayari doon sa Manila. Okay. So uh, my criticism po dito si Resel Mojares. Well, uh, first, textual and scholarly evidence, you may consider reading the following uh, evaluative reviews. So, pwede ta po dito may hiling na uh, indeed, in the early writings and development of local history or local studies, uh, may glimpse pa po, iba pa ang kirarin ng influence ng classical colonial scholarship na sabi na nga ni, medyo elite-oriented pa. Okay? Although na-develop na siya sa 1970s. More specifically sa, sa Bicol. Okay? Or more specifically about the Bicol history. Kaya po ang sinasabi na ni uh, Dr. Uh, Rizel Mojares, we must allow the realities of the locality or region to suggest the form of locality as for instance in the matter in the matter of periodization local history must not simply be used as a quarry for facts and details with which to flesh out the structure or frameworks of national history but must acquire its own form so itong uh, uh, pagka distinct or pagka unique kang local history so iyo po itong gustong ipaabot gini uh, Dr. Rizel Mojares na palatawon or i-underscore always foreground the grassroots experiences. No? So bako na itong karong makikikopya kita. Although we are forwarding or advancing local history but we simply imitate what is happening or what was happening in Manila. So yan ang criticism po din ni Dr. Rizel Mojares. So Eurocentric or Western-centered discourses and scholarships are the types of scholarships and discourses that underscore and perpetuate European viewpoint and superiority in various spheres economically, militarily, 
culturally and ideologically speaking. So this is also the influence. Actually, embedded siya dumasa inapod niya itong colonial, classical colonial scholarship. No? Na uh, nakapalaman siya duman. And that is, uh, well, being perpetuated in the historical writings. Even at the level of uh, the local history. So the scholarship becomes Eurocentric if the scholarship becomes over-dependent to the colonial writings. So si, uh, itong explanation tapo man so bago, maging malinaw lang po kita. Na. Dito man, tig-itsa pwera talaga ang mga colonial sources. As I am also following the uh, insights and the uh, the principles of other historians. Now, we cannot uh, fully uh, eradicate the importance of uh, the colonial sources. So at some point, they want us in the, to understand the past, although marred with racial and religious prejudices. Ngayon po, ang sinasabi talang digi is to at least regulate the over-dependence on the colonial writings by also employing other uh, research methodologies and approaches. So ngayon po, uh, may criticism as regards the Eurocentric uh, history, which is the history uh, that is uh, anchored much on the colonial uh, perspectives. Okay? So as written by Ileto, uh, well, as cited by Ileto, sa sayang article, history as we know it today has been written from the viewpoint of the Western European nations. So it therefore speaks of discovering the Philippines or China or Japan as though these places had not existed until Europeans came to know about them. So yan pong uh, 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 what we mean by Eurocentric historical discourses. So we then we used to understand Philippine history from the perspectives or viewpoint of the colonizers of the po or of the foreign writers. So Eurocentric or Western-centered uh, discourses and scholarships as embedded in the colonial writings are flawed with racial and religious biases. So ini ang saro sa uh, essential issue kang uh, inaapod niya tong colonial writings. It was in daning uh, issue regarding sa racial and religious biases. So Florendo's article is particularly indicative of the racial or religious prejudice in the colonial writing as she stated. So this is the textual evidence. So the report ni uh, Dr. Maria Nella Florendo sa, sa sayang article na uh, Igrots were misrepresented, denigrated. So this is uh, a clear evidence of uh, racial prejudice or religious prejudice. Na, uh, the way the foreigners during the time were treating or describing or perceiving uh, early Filipinos or native Filipinos. So one can also find the words of Aquino. The Spanish regime systematically destroyed native communities and their institutions. So it brutalized the Indians, making them work as forced labor, so nailing pa itong exploitation. So not just the denigration, but the exploitation. So yan po. So the vanquished uh, vanquish were viewed as savages or pagans who had, be, who had to be civilized. In many cases, the Indians would simply be killed outright. Genocide was a tool of conquest. Okay, so according to uh, the scholar Linda Tuhiwai Smith, a distinguished scholar of Maori decolonization in New Zealand, stressed that the aspirations of decolonization include the detachment from Eurocentric scholarships and the advancement of the scholarships that essentially espouse itong pinagpapayaman, ina-advance, tiko-foster, tiko-cultivate, tiko-instill itong people's perspectives and more importantly, the agency. 
So as taught to me by Sir Jai, so this is the uh, truest essence of decolonization, which is to espouse the people's agency. It is in such an aspiration where one can effectively appreciate the benefit of local studies as decolonizing scholarships. So the empowerment or promotion of grassroots or local realities and of the local constituents is consciously undertaken and fostered by the Philippine National Historical Society or PNHS in a manner that PNHS has propelled a major intellectual shift away from what Rizal Mojares, a distinguished uh, PNHS member, described as a classical colonial scholarship towards studies depicting the grassroots of Filipino civilization and the life histories of individual Filipino communities showing rural life in its whole, uh, full detail and color. So itong shift. So it is said that PNHS has, uh, has done a remarkable role for uh, you know, instilling this kind of uh, major intellectual shift. So the major break from the classical colonial scholarship towards the series of depicting the, the ordinary lives of uh, the Filipino people or communities. Such an undertaking, although not admitted openly as decolonizing studies, is nevertheless essentially decolonizing because such an attempt not only facilitates a detachment or break from the elite-oriented colonial discourses, but more importantly, empowers or promotes themes and topics on local studies that we are downplayed, shunned, uh, and neglected by the classical colonial scholarships, which were largely elite oriented. Yeah. Ito mga na ng mga uh, local history themes and topics. So they were empowered because of that kind of undertaking. So na realized din po ang mga historians that there is a need to also promote the historical writings at the local level, not just more on the Manila-centric Philippine history or the history of the elite or of the political figures. So na realize din kan nagkakapira na maybe we can also write historical writings from the grassroots realities. Yung mga madipek kang historia or historical writings na mapaluwas or mapalataw kang katong mga mga ordinaryong pagbubuhay kan mga kababayan niya to. So by abstaining from the exaggerations of the elite-oriented colonial discourse in rich scholarships, local studies advance scholarships that essentially empower or catalyze the elevation of the discourses that emanate from the bottom, from the margin, or from the periphery, and from the grassroots or local realities. So harali sa gilid, harali sa iraron. Arali duman sa mga picture or sa mga figure na kung saan bibihirang mapabisto sa mga historical writings. So uh, sa sarong article po, halimbawa nila Sir Abines and Mahagway, itong dekolonisasyon uh, para sa diwang Pilipino, uh, that article demonstrates how the empowerment or promotion of the grassroots discourses can be a case for decolonizing scholarships since they underline people's indigenous thought. Yaman din at the same time ang grassroots philosophy, vernacular literature, folklores, and myths and legends as traces or shreds of evidences, the wellspring and lifeline of the pure Filipino identity. So saro po ini sa mga contributory article or discourse to man sa pagpapa-advance kang local studies or local history. So by abstaining from the, uh, yes, uh, it was mentioned already. So in essence, it is the people who are the victims of historical misrepresentations, denigrations and silences, which is precisely the case of the indigenous peoples in Cordillera region as reported in Florendo's article. So nahiling tala po ini sa sarong preview kan subago, then uh, mas na-highlight din yung statement na ini. And I, uh, I'm quite sure that bako lang po ang mga igurots where the indigenous peoples 
of the north or of the Cordillera region na victims of misrepresentations or denigrations or of the marginalization but more importantly uh, I'm quite sure sa ibang uh, lalo pang sa tuyang nasyon or sa ibang ethnic groups okay sa ibang uh, uh, kababayan nyato sa Pilipinas so I guess uh, we can also think about the misrepresentations and denigrations of other uh, part of the society, other Filipinos. So Constantinus' uh, remarks are also provoking. So sinasabi ni Constantino na the people should have their history for they have made history through their participation in, ma in mass actions resulting in the unfolding of the social forms that seek to realize their goals. But in the recorded pages of history, they have remained in the background as if they had played only a negligible role. It is those who rule who have had their names and exploits emblazoned on, the, on these pages. The people have been taken for granted and their role has been minimized or even denied. So yeah, so sarap po sa, well, issue kang historiography in general that we always look at uh, the prominent figures and we seldom depict or study uh, the lives of those who are at the bottom or at the periphery. So Florendo demonstrated how significant the writing of local history is for the lives of the local constituents as represented by these excerpts. So sinasabi ni uh, Florendo na in the case of the Cordillera peoples, they have seized the moment to re-examine their historical roots and begin writing their own histories. So nakikwasin na ng uh, revisiting ang local history. And more importantly, they assert their agency. They assert the capacity to write their own history from their own point of view. So since then, the writing of local histories has become an empowering exercise toward generating an appropriate self-definition. Self-definition. So they are now defined not by the foreigners and the colonial writings, but they are trying to define who they are. And interpretation for people have been long misrepresented in history. Misrepresented in history. So kumbaga, ibang pagkakabistado. Ibang pagkakadescribe. Ngunyan, they assert their uh, ethnic identities and they assert who really they are as a people. So in a nutshell, local studies are essentially people empowering and decolonizing scholarships based on the following premises. So we have the following premises. So we have first, local history facilitates history from the people. Ini po ang magayon sa local history who are victims of historical misrepresentations and silences. So local history gives the proper platform for those people who were marginalized, neglected, or denigrated. Yeah. So local history is a, you know, a recovering platform. Okay. So, so nagiging kunyan siya. Uh, platform na kung saying, uh, and we are going to cleanse this uh, or rectify that kind of different history. So local studi uh, studies provide an opportunity for people to tell their own stories. So nailigta na po kanso bago baga na local history or local studies facilitates history from the people. So local studies or local history also provides an opportunity, a platform for people to, te to tell their own stories from their own perspective. Uh, as also demonstrated by uh, Salvador Amores in her article and kila Sir Acabado uh, sa na pong article regarding sa Ipugao uh, history or uh, yes, local studies. So writing people's history from their own viewpoint through the employment of innovative approaches subsequently provides an avenue for an appropriate self-definition and interpretation for people who have been long misrepresented uh, mis in history. 
hereby addressing the issues of racial and religious prejudices as engendered by classical colonial scholarships. So insofar as local history uh, facilitates history from the people, from their own perspectives, people becomes the active participants, subjects, authors, or writers of their own histories. As Stoughton Lind puts it, participants in making history should be regarded not only as sources of facts, but as colleagues in interpreting what happened. So, uh, ang sarap po sa mga implication, na, well, very obvious man po, ano, that we are not just using people to gather or to generate data or information. So we treat people as colleagues, okay? co-author. So we give them the proper respect they deserve as human beings, more specifically in writing or constituting social history. So bakit lang na inexploit ang tao na uh, makuanan or mahagada ng uh, information or data, but more importantly, they have to be considered as colleagues, co-author, no? kang social history. Dalong lalo na if in case at some point kung talagang na-invite sa sarong research undertaking or sa sarong research project. So a good rural history, according to Bernard Peter Churchill, something like everyday life in Capicola during the various periods of its historical experience would be exciting. So sinasabi ni Dr. Churchill na, there must be a color, colorful personalities in the countryside. Ordinary Bicolanos who can give life and blood to Bicol social history. So, sa mata and sa perspective ni Dr. Churchill, yaon duman ang importansya kang pagsusurat din din mga grassroots experiences, grassroots realities of human existence. So according to Dr. Norman Owen, history is also about smaller places, regions, provinces, even towns, and ordinary people. So sarok pa po ini sa mga insights na talagang uh, nagsusuporta duman sa idea ng local history or local studies that, that advance essentially the grassroots, uh, grassroots experiences of uh, the people. Amilcar uh, Cabral's remarks are worth mentioning. The masses are the torch bearers of culture. They are the source of culture and at the same time, the one entity, entity truly capable of preserving and creating it, of making history. So, digi po sa statement na ni, malinaw sa na sinasabi na, ang tao, iyo ang wellspring, iyo ang author, iyo ang architect, ang social history. So we cannot write social history without the people, without acknowledging the role of the people in the making of social history. So for the third part, we have local studies as building blocks of Philippine studies. So in his, the place of local history in the Philippine historiography, sinasabi po ni John Larkin na ang local histories as the necessary building blocks that will someday help in the construction of a substantial edifice for Philippine uh, historiography. Yun yung naghihip ng bloke. So ang nagko-constitute sa Philippine historiography or Philippine history as a whole, iyo po itong mga histories na harali sa provinces, sa regions, sa municipalities. So ang patugmadan kang Philippine history, ang ground yung Philippine history is itong various local histories which is not Manila-centric, which is not homogenizing, which is not hegemonic, but it comes from the bottom. Because as also mentioned by Mojares, local, history, uh, local studies is a form of commitment. It is a form of commitment to the long-term goals of building consciousness and power from the ground up of building a base for what would be truly inclusive nation. So digdi ko na po na, na generally and uh, na generate itong principle na kun sa in if we truly acknowledge or constitute Philippine history 
as grounded okay, from the local histories, various local histories. So Philippine history becomes more inclusive. Nagiging kabali na ibang itong ibang diskurso. Day na siya sinasabi takang so talong homogenizing. Baho na lang siyang more of elite oriented uh, history na pipira lang ang tipitipek sa history, mga political history. Baho na lang siyang more on Manila centric Philippine history but uh, the Philippine history is now grounded on the various types of local histories across the nation. So local studies as building blocks of Philippine studies have the following purposes. So local studies, the center, Manila-centric Philippine history, the centering. The second is local studies strengthen a view of history at the level of the village from within or from below, according to Moharas. It also strengthen or instill the view from the bottom, hali sa iraro, hali sa baba, or the view of the grassroots of Filipino civilization and the life histories of individual communities showing rural life in its full detail and color. And the last is local studies provide the foundation and substance, the sine qua non of the true national history. So local histories serve or local studies serve as the building blocks, the component that really constitute Philippine history as a whole. So uh, local studies is, uh, yes, uh, next uh, slide, please. So some valuable insights on local studies as building blocks of Philippine studies. So sinasabi din po, once again, ni, uh, ni Sir Samuel Tan, na ang regional history po, which is a form of local history, is a distinct but not separate from national history. So sa rupong research conference, sinapot ako, Kasi I am uh, also asserting or uh, promoting partido studies. So sinabi ka tong sarong participant, bakit mo naman hinihiwala yung partido studies? So sir, uh, following this principle, di ko naman po hinihiwala yung partido studies. Partido studies is a building block. It is a, it is a distinct component of both Bicol and Philippine studies. So hindi siya na, uh, well, although it, ex it exists on its own, but it supplements the larger perspectives of Philippine studies. So uh, it complements the larger uh, uh, area of Philippine studies. So in his recent lecture, the historian Augusto de Viana stressed that history works best when it starts from the locality. So halos ka, kasarabay ka mga thinking na kung Local history is indeed considered, or local studies are considered as the building blocks, the components of not just uh, the, the provincial or regional history, but the Philippine history, the nation's history as a whole. As Muharis once remarked, it is by taking the view of the village and of the villages all over the country that rural history shall enrich our understanding of national history. So Philippine history will emanate from the understanding of the local realities or of the grassroots realities. So the prolific scholar of local history in the Philippines, Leslie Boson, asserted that to study local history is to understand the grassroots civilization of a people. It is to study history from the bottom up, rather from the top down, like the Manila-centric Philippine history, top down. Okay. But in terms of Philippine history as grounded in local history, so it comes from the ground up, from the bottom up. So the inclusion of local history in the educational curriculum or the production of locally based learning materials is a catalyst or driving force or impetus of the advancement of local studies in the Philippines. So ang pag-include po sa sa curriculum. So that is a part of the advancement of local studies in the Philippines. Wherein, uh, magin po talaga na kita po tinutok doon kang Philippine history na pero locally based, ano po, nagpo-produce kita ng mga materials na locally based and 
we teach the children na uh, uh, well about the the Philippine history as not limited to man sa inaapon niya tong Manila centric Philippine history. Tandaan ko pa po uh, ang elementary and even sa high school uh, ang mga nagkanurod din sa Philippine history is more on yes the Manila centric Philippine history. Seldom that we learn or we see or encounter and perhaps halos may nga ni po kung may na-encounter na talaga na uh, itong local history or culture of the Bicolanos for instance. So yan po ang, uh, well, sa nanudan ni kanto in our time. So Partido Studies or PS as Local Studies, I guess we are now on the uh, last part of the discussion. So in defining or articulating PS, this project follows Mohares' definition of local studies which is the parallel scholarly interest in local history. At this point po, pinapabistado, pinaposa ito kung ano ang partido studies because nagkakaigwa naman pong development ng partido studies. So bako na lang Bicol studies, but we have the advent of what we can call partido studies. And uh, for me, uh, as a scholar, okay, uh, I'm trying to define PS base po duman sa sa related uh, li literature no sa mga explanation kang uh, mga scholars uh, manungod sa local history and local studies so uh, ps was marginalized sinabi pong marginalized na ichapuera and neglected in the historical and cultural knowledge production particularly in bicol and in the philippines at large so kung ma uh, pagpapararumun po niya to ang satuyang review of related literature and research, considering also the quantity of the published materials, kung pabalikan ta pa ang 1980s, 1970s, in the 1980s po, padikit-dikit nagdi-develop ng Bicol Studies. But seldom that we see uh, scholarly production or publication from Partido area. Although nadidepect man siya sa ibang writings, but itong vivacity, itong uh, vibrance kang partido studies uh, is not, uh, or kumbaga unparalleled masyado. Medyo harayo sa development kang sinasabi niya itong Bicol studies. In fact, uh, just recently pa lang po na nakoconceptualize talaga ang inapod niya itong Partido Studies. So, seldom that we heard Partido Studies before. Seldom that I encounter the term Partido Studies in the 1980s or early 1990s. So, mostly ang nahihiling ko is Bicol Studies. Uh, according to Ria Lubit and Totanes, uh, Bicol Studies in uh, well, in the 1990s or 1980s was urban-centered so masyado din nakatutok sa uh, mga highly urbanized areas, notably the, uh, the Naga and Ligaspi. So it was clearly mentioned in an article written by Totanes. There was, a, uh, there was also, uh, there's also an article na kung indicate din ni Ria Lupit na, na kung or na observe niya na the Bicol Studies was uh, not fully uh, studied. So may mga parts pang kaipuan pang explore or uh, uh, i-investigaran or pag-adala. So as uh, clearly mentioned by Owen, Partido is considered as one of the neglected corners of the Philippine history. Although uh, Owen meant that uh, the neglect of Partido is more on economic uh, implication or connotation. Pero po, halos kasabay na din ang pag-neglect sa historical discourses in Partido. So, halos nasasabay na din sa economic neglect or marginalization. So, Owen's remark on Partido's marginalization attests to the present state of the local studies in Partido. Since the local university, specifically Partido State University, currently suffers from and grapples with the scarcity of publications and scholarly materials on Partido's heritage. 
So yan, uh, medyo kulang pa kita. Sabi ko nga ni Kansubago uh, po, unparalleled pa masyado. And I, I can say now na partido studies, uh, kumbaga, lag behind the development of other uh, types of historical and cultural discourses, such as, well, the Bicol studies. So recently pa lang nag, nag-blossom or uh, nag-sprout ang inapod niya itong Partido Studies. So Owen considered Partido as one of the neglected corners of the Philippine history. Owen's remark on uh, remark on Partido's marginalization attests to the present state of the local studies in Partido. So uh, it was already uh, mentioned a while ago. Pero may nag-ulit-ulit pong slide. So the neglect and marginalization of PS in the historical and cultural knowledge production is the neglect and marginalization of partiduanos. Kung babalikan po niya to ang prinsipyo ng local studies, isn't it that the local studies depict or forward or advance the story of the people? Isn't it? So by principle, if partido studies, which is technically the local studies in partido, lag behind, or you could say marginalized or neglected sa larger perspective or map kang Bicol studies or Philippine studies. So we can also say that the partiduanos was marginalized in the historical discourses. Kasi ang local studies really forward, really depict the lives of the local constituents. So we are arguing for that. On a more positive note, Partido studies are gradually developing as propelled by the scholarly initiatives of the researchers slash scholars of Partido State University. Although, yes, we lag behind, but we are advancing Partido studies. We are trying to promote Partido studies. We foster uh, Partido studies. So we can see that advancement uh, in the works or, uh, yes, in the scholarly initiatives that have been undertaken so far in Partido State University, uh, well, thank to the uh, engaging scholars na nag-contribute talaga sa advancement ng uh, Partido Studies. So we can now see here, following the local history movement of uh, Mojares, kasi Mojares really believed and he posited that the driving force of local studies are the following. So there's this in independent initiatives in building local studies centers. So sa kunyan pong iyan, sa ladong iyan, may hiling nyato na may ginibo ang, or may nangyari sa Partido State University. So there's this initiative of the establishment of MDI or Museo de Sarog in 2005 and the construction of cultural center and the institutionalization of Center for Partido Studies. So ini po ang mga scholarly initiatives na ginibo ng Partido State University. So we can see there, uh, ang importansya po kasi ang pagkakaigo ng MD, uh, at ang sarong museum, local museum is, you collect the local sources. Okay? Something that we can also attribute to the center, uh, the, the local studies center. Kasi po, following the explanation of uh, Resel Mujares, uh, ang local study center is composed of archives, you have there the library, and you have there the museum, etc. etc. So, any component na ni, or any, you could say, building or edifice. So, it's in the pong task na talagang uh, ang role ninda is to really advance the historical and cultural discourses of the specific locality. So, ma produce in the ni mga research uh, articles. So journals, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and they were uh, they will uh, uh, propagate or disseminate the information and the importance of local studies. Sa pagikam pagkagawing series of research conferences and seminars and workshops and lectures like this. Okay, naginigibon niya to minsan. So we also have university initiated projects in research publication. Because this is. Uh, a strong uh, habit or experience na kung sain talagang may advance niya to or ma-foster niya to ang advancement ng local studies or local history. 
napagid po kang pagpapublish ni uh, mga research articles and journals. So, uh, in terms of the collection of local source materials, so yan po, uh, yan na din under that um, category in uh, establishment ng MDI. Pero interestingly uh, enough, uh, nagpon po ang uh, Museo de Sarog sa, sa kunyan po, uh, sa pangingenot ni Ma'am Delcy Millares when she conducted or supervised the students to, uh, to document cultural information or historical information in the in, in Partido District. So with that undertaking, dumana po nagkikwaning idea si administration na magkikwaning or magtugdok ng Sarong Museum sa Partido State University. So there's a paper na alapid po for that uh, storytelling. <laughs> so we also have conducted the cultural mapping project. So that is an essential, essential part of the, the advancement of the local studies in Partido or the Partido studies, studies itself. So in terms of the, well, the holding of professional seminars and conferences on local history, so we are advancing uh, activities to complement the things before, like as advanced by Dr. Tani and other undertakings. So by speaking about Partido studies, uh, the local studies in Partido, we mean that there is a conflation or emergence of studies or parallel scholarly interest in the local history, local culture, local heritages, and local vernacular literatures. The categorization of Parsus scholarly initiatives within Moharis's local history movement reveals that TS is not just all about the local history studies, but also more importantly, the study of local culture and local heritage and partido studies, more importantly, is a form of local studies in the Philippines. So under this lens and explanation, I hope that we can also acknowledge that partido studies is also a form of local studies in the Philippines. So there's something that we can look forward about PS. So we are preparing an article na sarong diskurso na mapahiling na Partido Studies is a body of decolonizing grassroots and people empowering scholarships. And secondly, Partido Studies are building blocks or distinct components of Bicol and Philippine Studies. So Partido Studies is not just Partido Studies, but Partido Studies has a lot of implications. It has meanings. It, it has lots of meanings and purpose. Punta daw igo kita ning Partido Studies. So PS as advanced by Parsos scholarly initiatives empower, promote, or espouse the, the discourses or the scholarships that reflect or depict grassroots uh, realities in Partido, which were essentially neglected, shunned, pinabayaan, inichapuera, napabolang uh, bahala, and saisai by the elite-oriented uh, uh, classical colonial scholarships. Put differently, the scholarly initiatives that peace embody for ground neither the historical, uh, the historical cultural realities of Manila, nor Naga, nor Legaspi, but of the local realities in Partido. Ang laman kang Partido studies are the studies that really depict, that really espouse, that really promote the grassroots realities here in Partido. So similarly, Partido Studies empower or espouse uh, the historical cultural discourses in Partido that stems from the ordinary lives of Partiduanos who are particularly and essentially victims of historical silences and marginalization. Next one. So uh, sa Indo po gabos na nag-aantabay, sa sa Indo po uh, na nag-anduyog sa aktibilidades na ni, uh, Diyos Mabalos po, as in salamatun po sa pag-aantabay, sa pagtangog, as in sa pagpartisipar sa ngunyan na webinar. Thank you po.